Mayor of the City of New London, Carol Finisi. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Guard Arts Center, for hosting this great event today. First, I must say uh, to Ms. Gemma Moran, thank you so much for your lifetime of service to our community, and congratulations on the award that you are receiving today. It's a true honor to you, and your service is an honor to us. So thank you so much, ma'am, for all that you've done. This is also a great day in the City of New London as we inaugurate officially the Create Here Now program that has brought numerous storefronts into formerly vacant spaces in downtown New London. This is a great example of how the state, the city, local organizations, and private businesses can partner together to grow our local economy. So tonight will be a great celebration of our city, a great celebration of these new stores, which I encourage you all to check out on the walk tonight. Uh, and a great night to celebrate what makes us such a unique and special community, uh, this great, great place we call New London. So, welcome to you all, and it is my honor to introduce the partner that we have had here in New London from the state of Connecticut, uh, who has helped us spearhead this initiative, the Deputy Commissioner of the State Department of Economic and Community Development, Mr. Kip Bergstrom. So my job is to say a little bit about placemaking and uh, thank people and then uh, give an award. There's a brochure you're going to get shortly, and on the second page it has something called the best origin story in America. Now I'm not going to read it, but um, you might want to because um, America is an idea. It's not really a place. It's an idea. And the fundamental idea is tolerant pluralism, a pluralist, entrepreneurial democracy. And that idea was born here 350 years ago. Uh, John Winthrop Jr. branded uh, New London as the New London and the New England and the New World. He was an alchemist who were the scientists of their day. And he was keen on getting his buds to join him here where they would create a new world and a new land, find the one cure for all disease, turn lead into gold and all those, what we now think of as foolish errands. But here's what you have to understand about the alchemists. They needed a ton of money to do their research. So they were the miners, they were the ironworks makers, they were the scientific farmers because that generated the capital that they could invest back in the research. And on the way to discovering the cure for everything, they actually discovered cures for some things. <coughs> and New London was sort of like a hospital city in, in, in 1650. People who were sick came here to be cured by John Northrop Jr. And I've been thinking, because around that time, in the mid-1700s, 17th century, 1600s, um, pretty much the whole world were autocracies intolerant theocracies, with only a couple of exceptions. And so I was wondering, how did the average Joe, or you know, the average Silas and Prudence, pick up this idea of tolerance? So just up the coast from here, in Rhode Island, there was this guy, Roger Williams, who was, who said basically, be tolerant or go to hell. <laughs> uh, and what he meant by that was, only God could be certain. The fundamental human condition was uncertainty. To believe you had a lock and the truth was blasphemy, therefore you must be tolerant. So for those folks at the time, this idea of doing something that might have you go to hell was actually something they took pretty seriously. And down, down the coast in New Amsterdam, the Dutch had this golden goose, this goose that was laying golden eggs. They tr it was already a World Trade Center. They were making tons of money. They were buying from all different kinds of people and selling to all different kinds of people. And basically, intolerance was bad for business. And when the English took over New Amsterdam, they kept that goose. They kept it free from the theocracy because they got the idea that it's not such a bad thing to make a ton of money. So you had 
you know, you go to heaven, you make tons of money. Those are pretty good drivers. But I think the thing that pushed it over the edge was the fact that John Winthrop Jr. here was the best physician in the colonies. And if you were sick, and you were sick a lot in 1650, it's really good to have the best physician in the colonies. So it's good to make money, but if you die, you can't. And while it's good to go to heaven when you die, I think they were actually a little bit more focused on what happened in the meantime. So if he, they probably didn't understand this bit about tolerance and innovation and needing all these diverse minds. That probably just went right over their head. But basically, if he said he needed a bunch of diverse people to cure me and my wife and my kids, I think that was what turned the, turned the tide. And from those seeds, we are who we are as a people. It started here. The idea of America started here. It's not perfect. It's not, you can't quite say that regardless of religion, nation, or race, you can come here and be safe and be um, free of prosecution. That's not always been the case, but it's more true than it is in most places, and it's the ideal we aspire to. So, New London invented America. That's the way I put it. You should be proud of that. And America needs a little reinventing, I think. Our democracy is stale, paralyzed, polarized. A little bit of that good old tolerance wouldn't be such a bad thing. So maybe we can demonstrate something here in the city that the rest of the nation once again follows and picks up. So, just, so that was my thing on place. Um, but just because I can't help it, I will also say one other thing. Quoting that famous American philosopher, Linda Ronstadt. <laughs> and she said, place is where your soul inhabits the soil. So think about that. Think about the place where your soul inhabits the soil. Is this that place? And what are we doing to feed the soul of this place, our soul? Because place is not just buildings, it's mostly people. It's what we do. Um, it's not possible to succeed at that without visionary leadership uh, from elected officials and their staffs, their economic development directors and their other staff. New London is lucky to have that. It's also not possible to succeed in placemaking without property owners who get it and who put their shoulder behind the wheel, starting with the guard. This is the beating heart of New London. There's no presenting theater in the state that has the kind of community development role that this place has. And all the storefronts that you're going to see tonight have a property owner behind them who's taking a risk on a young entrepreneur, a young artist. And but for that, you would have no storefront program. So big thanks to all the property owners who are part of this. As I said, placemaking is about people. And we are here to honor Gemma Moran, one of New, New London's most important people. Um, she's been Gemma to her kids, but also to this city. And 25 years ago, established a food bank. In a time when New London and Groton were in the depths of economic despair, she put together, organized the unions to create the first food bank to get people through that time. We honor that, we honor her tonight, and we have something to present to her, Virginia. You can. People are probably tired of my Well, I have been very excited to be introduced to the concept of place me. I mean, the last several evenings I have read whatever I could find on, on it as a movement, as a, as a thought process. So we wrote this for Gemma based on what we knew about Create Here Now. And it says, placemaking strengthens the connection between people and the places they share. Placemaking is how people intentionally shape the world. Placemaking is how we shape humanity's future. Placemaking is how people increase the capacity for people to strive with each other. And because placemaking promotes people's health, happiness, and well-being, an award has been created to honor those who are essential and sacred. 
The first placemaking award in the state is being given to you, Jim, and tonight as a, as a placemaking pioneer, founder of the Jim E. Moran United Way Flavor Food Center on this occasion, the occasion of your, in the year of your 90th birthday, because of your uncompromising commitment, dedication, humanity, inspiration, vision, and determination. And it's signed by, by Kip Ferguson. Thank you very much.